Hey, what's going on out there, everybody? This is Sammy Leggett here representing Team JVS. I did not get an opportunity of checking out this film um, at uh, Toronto International Film Festival 2022, but I did get to watch it finally, and I'm talking about The Sun. Now, The Sun, whether you know it or not, this director, Florian Zeller, directed The Father, which Father was one of my favorite films last year. And, I mean, of course, it had Sir Anthony Hopkins in it. As a father, ironically, he's also a father. And this, but there's no relation. It's just very fascinating that you got the father and now you got the son. But um, Hugh Jackman plays the role of Peter. Peter is a very well astute and professional businessman. He's making very good moves and he has just had a baby. Um, his wife at this current time is Vanessa Kirby, named Beth. And he's just really ecstatic. But you come to find out he also has another son. And his other son's name is Nicholas, played by um, Zen Makrath. Um, And his former wife, Kate, was Laura Dern. Automatically, just, just on paper, these are some amazing actors. Like Vanessa Kirby, Hugh Jackman, Anthony Hopkins, Laura Dern. That's gold in and of itself. And I think personally, like some of their moments together, like some of their scenes together are magnetic. Like they they are proficient at what they do. There's one scene with Anthony Hopkins and Hugh Jackman. It takes place, I think, at Anthony Hopkins' house. And it's very short, but it has all the anxieties and frustrations and the and the hurts and the pains and just a small line of dialogue. That's one of the things that Florian excels at is dialogue and scripting. You Jackman's character, Peter, in this one, he's dealing with the crossroads. He's dealing with not trying to be his father. He's trying to also be a father of two. And at the same exact time, he's trying to comprehend who he's meant to be now as a politician, as a businessman, and a future, you know, person and a personality. Um... And he learned a terrible lesson from his dad. But sometimes when you learn a certain lesson from one father, you make up more mistakes because you don't really understand the truth of what needs to happen. What what open line of communication really needs to happen. Now, Zen McGrath in this one as Nicholas, I think he does a really good job. I think that he's definitely a kid that you can tell is dealing with a lot of issues like specifically i would account for depression um and you know when you're dealing with crippling depression like there's so many levels of hopelessness there's so many different levels of um you know there's a cycle there's a cycle to it like first it's kind of like the numbness then it's like the hopelessness then it's trying to find means or ways to keep yourself wanting to be alive to everything around you you just want to not be here anymore to what does that cause you to do from a physical level what does that cause you to do from an emotional level detracting and disconnecting like you see every different stage of that through uh zen as nicholas in this in this film now laura dern's character is kate and also vanessa kirby it's kind of like when you have a family member that's dealing with alcoholism or or an addiction or if they're dealing with like trauma or if they're dealing with like what Nicholas is dealing with is depression is is very evident that you know sometimes the mom is there and they can tell they know something is wrong but a lot of the time you know like even though they're asking you that they're doing the right things even though they're trying to be there it's still just not enough and I think that in so many different levels, both Kate and Beth are dealing with that on the different sides. Like for Beth, kind of like, this is not my kid and how am I supposed to interact with this? But I can see that my husband is not seeing what's going on. And then for Laura Durst, Kate, it's like, I've seen this kid from birth. I know the source of his pain, but I'm also dealing with stuff too. And he's probably inherited it from me and I can't give him what I can't. You know, and, and and at the center of this is still Peter. And I think what the story does as it's fleshed out is it shows that 
you don't know what a person's true hurt is until you really truly ask them, but they have to be willing to also let their guard down to feel like it's a safe space enough to do that. This is the issue that I have with this film. It's not the acting. Um, I don't even think it's necessarily the dialogue. I think it's the way that the movie It's, it's, it's a combination of pace and it's a combination of the way it's scripted. There are moments that, oh, wow, this is really important. Oh, wow, I can see this is a very red flag. They're going to deal with it. And then all of a sudden they use exposition to say, oh, well, you know, three days have gone by and this person has done this, this, that, and the other. In a whole open line of dollar. There's, I kid you not, there's a scene with Nicholas and his mom, Kate, that... I have no recollection of what that conversation is even about. Like, it, was, it almost seemed like this was a longer movie and they had a whole other scene, whole other characters and interaction for the character Nicholas and possibly even for Peter. That just didn't happen. Then there's another conversation that's had early on with, you know, Peter and Nicholas. You can tell that Peter is very adept to, okay, I can see something's going on. He's made himself emotionally available. He says, okay, what's going on with you? Okay, we'll get you a therapist. Okay, they're having open lines of conversation, which is really good, which is essential. And then, I don't know how many days or weeks or possibly months. I don't know the timetable. I have no idea. But there's another conversation that happens with Peter and Nicholas. And it seemed like everything from that other previous conversation just went completely out the door. Just just on paper. Like, I'm like, you, no, that doesn't add up. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't make sense. And I'm not saying that this doesn't happen. I'm not saying that certain times parents or family members or people that you love, they can't see or perceive outside of their own situations. I'm not saying that. But the way that this is scripted, just writing people, Peter as an individual and how it seems like he's very perceptive of certain stuff that's going on because he understands certain levels of traumas himself. Um, and, and then he's very sympathetic to certain stuff. And it's like, all of a sudden, like, oh, wow, I didn't know this. And then even, I, I think it's more of a disservice to Zen as Nicholas because there are times where I know for a fact, okay, this person is not telling the truth because they're trying to get away here. There's a great scene. There's a really great scene with, with Kate, Peter and Nicholas and they're having a communication with a doctor and it's a really powerful one it is, it is it's heartbreaking right and the weird thing about as great as that is less than two scenes later it's like oh everything's bubble gums and rainbows and I'm like wait 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 I know like I get <laughs> I get how stuff can be, it's like the way that it's written, it's like you, the worst case scenarios of everything you could think of. And I'm like, that don't add up because it doesn't fit the mode of Hugh Jackman's character, Lauren, Laura's character, Laura Dern's character either. It just didn't add up. And it's weird because with Anthony Hopkins' character, I was like, okay, I, I, I get it. Even now to Nicholas, I was like, I get this. I see what's happening here, but it's the way that they utilize Kate and Peter that just doesn't add up. And then, even weirder than that, kind of just like with the Nicholas situation, I know I'm going on rant, I apologize for that, but with Beth as a character, there's a lot of times she's using a whole bunch of exposition as well. It's like, oh, you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing this? And I'm like, I don't see any of this. What are you talking about? I, I the, the dialogue is dope, is good, but it isn't it isn't adding up like <laughs> a b and then it's d you know what i mean like where does c go the c is just not here so that's the issues that i have with this film that there are open lines of dialogue that are saying things but then they use an exposition to explain stuff and it's not shown and it's not just that it's not shown it's like okay this is pivotal stuff that doesn't add up and then this character is making a huge decision here but that wouldn't be the same as that way they would handle it before. Cause they just had a real conversation. And so I think that the sensitivity of this is where it starts to become a problem because it's not, and then it goes to, okay, it's not just a writing problem. It's like, okay, sensitivity to the situation now. Okay, this is really serious. And yeah, it's just not handled well. Um, and it's weird to say because I, I it's, 
it's so weird to say because the way that they handled dementia in the father oh my gosh so serious and it's not to say that you know zen didn't play a person that's dealing with chronic um depression well it's the handling and the process and what that looks like it just it just did not it did not line up unfortunately on the way that they they shot it and the way that they scripted it uh but it's weird also for me to say there's some great powerful performance in this some great performance like Hugh Jackman is doing great um, Anthony Hopkins is doing great. Lord Dern's doing great. Like even Vanessa Kirby's like, I have some great scenes and this newcomer's in. Like he's he's doing a good job. But I don't know, it's just and then at the end, the way they handled the end, I think that also is another level of sensitivity that I didn't think that they I don't know if I the way that they handled that I think could have been done better. And the reason why I say that is because Going back, and I don't normally make comparisons, but there's a movie that came out in 2021 called Mass. And primarily, that whole entire movie is exposition. The whole entire movie is a conversation that's in one room. And it's going from A to Z. But in going from A to Z, there's never a point where it's like you question anything. And unfortunately, there's a lot of open lines of conversation with this that you do. Um, I'd rate this at a 6.5 out of 10. Great acting, great cinematography, even some great, great camera work. Um, and the actors are, they're, they're really diving into it. But just everything else, it just kind of falls, unfortunately. Let me know what you guys think about the sun. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell button. I appreciate you guys.